Now that's more like it for the Mariners, especially with that offense. Now how did I feel about this game? You will find out after a word from our sponsor, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is a mobile ticketing app for sporting events, concerts, and other events. They make the buying experience easier by the app ranking each ticket from 0 to 10 to see if you are getting a good deal, and you can see exactly where you are sitting. I regularly use that app, and I have had nothing but a fantastic experience with SeatGeek. Use my promo code ROOFTOPSPORTS to get $20 off of your first purchase. Link to the code, app, and website will be in the description, so take advantage, and thank you. So yes, definitely take advantage, especially if you plan to go to a Mariners game, especially when they're giving away a Ken Griffey Jr. bobblehead. Don't miss it. Especially use that promo code. So the Mariners won, finally, in impressive fashion, 9-3, to with great offensive display. Now, before we get into this, hit the like button, subscribe, hit that notification, and let's get started. Now, first off, I was not able to cover this game Yes, I had been doing a Mariners game nine games in a row on live shows, but this time it was snapped due to being at my softball game, which I did win. I'm sorry, shall I say, my team won. And here's a highlight of my hit. I hope that doesn't disappoint you. So anyways, let's get into the game. So it started with... In the first inning, first it was J.P. Crawford who walked, and then it was Julio Rodriguez who also walked, which is a massive improvement because J.P. Crawford and Julio Rodriguez, they've been they've been walking. I'm sorry, they've been struggling just real badly, and Mariners absolutely need these guys to step up because if they don't step up, like it's going to be hard for the Mariners to make the playoffs. So there are two men on base. And the next thing you know, Jorge Polanco hits a home run, a three-run home run, second straight day with a home run, and now he is tied as the leader in home runs for the Mariners. That is being tied with Dominic Canzone, who is out with an injury, which did bring up Jonathan Classe, the other Mariners prospect, which we will get back to in, in moments. And then... And throughout the game, Montas was, for the Reds, he was just struggling as a starter. He just kept walking batter after batter after batter. Like, right after the Polanco home run, then Mitch Hanniger walked. And then, sadly, Ty France hit another double play, which he seems to be the double play specialist, which is why I don't really like him as, like, a... I don't like him much as someone being high up in the order. I think he should be towards the bottom or, like, maybe the middle at best. But I think somewhere in the middle to the bottom is where he is best suited. And then Luke Rayleigh, he played very well. Like he made a nice little bunt single, and he actually does have speed. I mean, look at the guy. He's a big guy, but he still has speed to make up for it. And then Jonathan Classe made his major league debut. And here's the thing like, I was nervous about it because I didn't think it was time to to call him up. I thought they were just going to call up some odd Taylor who has actually been making some contributions when he started with the Mariners in the regular season as if he already made contributions during spring training, but I guess they just rolled the dice. They really took the risk and his first attempted hit. It was a nice fly ball, had a nice barrel to it, but it just, he just got under it, which landed in the glove and George Kirby. He's been pitched. He was pitching very well, pitched six strikeouts but he did give up a home run but the Mariners responded with a Mitch Hanniger two-run home run which Polanco on base which he got on base three times or shall I say basically two times two or three times and he scored all three times and then Jonathan Classe had a really nice he had a nice potential bloop single but then Ellie De La Cruz the star shortstop for the Cincinnati Reds made a nice sliding catch like it was a very nice catch. Gotta give him credit on that one. And then eventually Ty France hit the double, which eventually led to Classe finally getting his RBI, and he was met with a standing ovation. Like he he did really well for this game. And then Jake Fraley, when Gabe Spire came in, of course he just had to hit a home run. And I really miss Jake Fraley. If you're wondering who Jake Fraley is, he was from the Mariners, and then he was packaged in the trade for Eugenio Suarez, but I really did like him because the man really did get on base, like, and he was really good at, he was very efficient in getting on base. So I, I really miss the guy, miss that blue collar style of his baseball. And then Mitch Hanniger got another RBI, 
and then Ty France had a sacrifice fly, which that would have been useful yesterday had he done that yesterday, so the Mariners could have won that game, but he got an RBI. And then Luke Rayleigh hit a nice triple. Now, granted that the center fielder was off, he should have let it bounce, but he was just trying to be the hero. But because he tried to be the hero, the ball went right past him, and then Luke Rayleigh was given that triple, which led to the RBI. And then at the end of the game, Taylor Saucedo, he he dominated in his outing as a pitcher. He he got the nice strikeout on De La Cruz, and that ended the game where the Mariners won 9-3. to Now let's take a look at the box score, shall we, for how everyone did. Because I'd like to see how it was done. So J.P. Crawford, yeesh. He struck out three times, but he did get that walk to make up for it, but... He's not looking good at all. Julio Rodriguez had a s- not much of a better game either. He At least he struck out only one time. He did get that walk and a hit, so at least his on-base percentage was a little bit better. Jorge Polanco was fantastic today. Well, he hit that. I mean, he, he walked twice, and he hit a home run, three-run homer, and now he's got his third home run. Mitch Hanniger was fantastic, two for three. He contributed very well with three RBIs. Ty France was one for three at least. And then Cal Raleigh got one for three and a walk. So that's that's pretty good. That's not average, but good. Luke Rayleigh went two for four. And it's nice to see Luke Rayleigh actually contributing because he's just hasn't seen enough at bats. But with Dominic Canzone out with an injury, maybe we'll see more at bats out of him. And then Jonathan Classe, not too shabby for a major league debut. One for four. Yeah, he struck out. Maybe it should have been two for four if De La Cruz didn't catch that bloop single that should have been. But at least he got the RBI. And then Josh Rojas, arguably one of the most efficient players on the Mariners. He got he was one for four, so maybe not so much of a great game. So that there's your offense right there. And my concern still is JP Crawford and Julio Rodriguez still not contributing well. Their batting averages are below 200, and their on-base percentage is below 300. So those players have really got to get that up. The good news is, at least, Cal Raleigh got his batting average above 200. But Julio and J.P. Crawford's success is very critical for the Mariners. So those two, hopefully, they can make some more progress going forward. At least they both contributed to scoring runs so I guess that's somewhat progress but I still want to see more better results out of that and now let's get into the pitching so for the Reds let's get this over with Montas gave up three hits five runs all earned five walks and only struck out one and he gave up two home runs 66 pitches and just two innings he did not last long as he was just absolutely awful George Kirby, on the other hand, pitched very well. Six strikeouts. He did give up that home run. Gave up the two earned runs. But, I mean, I can't get too mad at him as he still he still hit very... He still pitched very well. Five hits, considering his last two starts where he has struggled. But this time, he got it right this time. And the bullpen did pretty well as, as well. Only gave up one total run. Four total strikeouts with Saucedo in the ninth inning with three strikeouts. In the ninth inning in just 13 pitches. That is as efficient as it gets. Now going forward, how do I feel about the Mariners? If they won their first game of that series, I would really like to see a sweep. And I know it may be, quote, unreasonable to think it's a sweep. But here's the thing. The next two pitchers, you got Logan Gilbert and Bryce Miller. And and both of them in their last outings, they pitched very well. And I would... I would really like a sweep because it would actually make up for the fact that the Mariners lost the series to Chicago and Toronto. So if you sweep this series against Cincinnati Mariners, you will be making up the series out of Toronto and Chicago. So let's make that sweep happen. And the next pitcher that they're going up against is Hunter Green, who is not off to a good start. He's 0-1 with a 9 ERA. And Andrew Abbott, he'll be the tough one. 1-0 1-0 with a 1.29. So Mariners winning tomorrow would be very critical. So let's make that happen. And hopefully the Mariners can... Hopefully they can take care of business. And hopefully Classe can do well going forward. And Luke Rayleigh and J.P. Crawford and Julio, please get your batting averages above 200. 
Well, that's going to do it for me. Those are my thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe, hit that notification, and go Mariners. Thank you very much for watching. If you would like to relive the terrible series of Chicago, here are those videos. Or if you would like to relive some Mariners nostalgia, here's this one as well.